Previously on the bill. So where's Des? He's still being there. Come on, was was right now. I swear he was going to shoot me, and then my dad put himself forward. We didn't want to see you get hurt, did he? You made your choice to have another man's child. Yes. I'm thinking his dad might be in there. No, he's not said anything. He's not really one to wear his heart on his sleeve, though, is he? Excuse me, I can't find my parents. I think they're still in there. Your parents? They live near where that guy's got the gun. How are you this morning? Can't say I slept much last night. Understandable, under the circumstances. I can't believe Kathy's treated me like this. She got engaged to my ex behind my back and chose not to tell me. I mean, did you think I'd never find out? I know yesterday was hard to swallow, but you have to remain focused. You can't afford to let this hinder us today. Yeah, I know. No second thoughts about exposing Kathy's role in all this. I can't believe I've got to sink to her level. It's not about sinking to any level. It's about the truth. Are we in agreement? Yeah. Good. Sarge. Uh, this lady's just arrived, flown in from Heathrow. Her parents live in the building Jules Ellis is occupying. She says they haven't been evacuated. I thought we got everyone out. Not Mum and Dad. I spoke to her an hour ago. Well, she hadn't a clue what was going on. I don't think she's been taking her insulin. She's diabetic? Yes. She should have injections twice a day. And if she doesn't? She'll collapse, go into a coma. And is their golden wedding anniversary? Yes. I've flown over from Malta to take them out. And what are their names? Jocelyn and Frank. And can you take me through the telephone conversation? Well, I asked for Dad to be put on. Mum said he'd gone down the shops for their tea. The thing is, he can't go out. He's got arthritis in both knees. Besides, he'd never leave Mum alone. Why's that? She's losing her memory. It's Dad who makes sure she takes her insulin. Can you give me that telephone number, please? The Brooks are in there. Next to Ellis? Oh, better than that. Underneath. I've talked to the super and there's not enough time for him to get down here, so I'm going to have to make the decision whether we go in or not. And get that DS brand from SO19 over here. And tell the negotiator I want an assessment on Jules Ellis. Yes, ma'am. Oh, come on, Mrs. Brooke, come on. Sergeant Murphy, have a seat. Thank you, sir. Is this about the area car crash? Yes. But I thought I could rely on you to spread the word that Reg is expected to make a good recovery. And Des? Forensics are still combing the scene. But as yet, they haven't found a body. There's no easy way to say this. But it looks like Des was caught in the heart of the fire. Which would explain why forensics haven't found anything yet. I thought you should know what was happening. Thanks, sir. Sandra hasn't spoken to her dad for two days, so we have to assume that Mrs. Brooke has missed at least four insulin injections. That's a bad sign if she's confused already. Which is why you want to go in and pull her out along with Mr. Brooke. Who's in a wheelchair. Anything else? No. Right. Let me outline your options. The Brooks live here, directly below Ellis. For starters, you won't be able to use the rear entrance. It's the warehouse development backs onto a railway. So you'll have to go in the front, which is more exposed. Particularly as Ellis has a vantage point from the top of these stairs. But the negotiator's told us he's spending most of his time in the storeroom in the attic. You think he won't hear you? And what if he does? 
The negotiator said he's tired and erratic and subject to mood swings. And he's already shot a man, Inspector. Perhaps you need to think this through. Look, I've got a seriously ill resident in need of medical treatment urgently. We need to act now. Now, we come to events on the night of Dr. Preston's death. Your account has been consistent throughout, but the prosecution want to portray you as the gold digger. And Kathy Bradford's evidence yesterday supported that by doing doubt on your credibility. So what do I do? Well, I want you to tell the jury that Kathy came around after Owen died. But she didn't put that in her statement. I'm not interested in the statement. So you want me to say she lied? Well, that's the truth, isn't it? She did come around. I thought we went through this yesterday, Polly. Are you still with me on this? Yeah. Right then. I'm going to change the order of things. Uh, I'll be calling your character witnesses, PC Stamp and Sergeant Ackland first. This will allow us to build up a picture of our version of events gradually, ending with your account at the end to maximise impact. Any questions? Thank you very much. That's Mrs. Brooks' GP has confirmed the diabetes and there's more. She's in the early stages of Alzheimer's. My priority is to contain Ellis and any threat that he represents. If you go ahead, you could put all that into jeopardy. And if I don't, an elderly woman could die. That's not your responsibility. But what if I've got a realistic chance of doing something about it? Mum, yep. I've just spoken to the negotiator and Ellis has asked for some medical supplies. He wants uh, bandages, swabs, sterile dressings. He says it's a flesh wound. Himself or his hostage? He wouldn't say. This could be the cover we need to go in and get the boxes out. Possibly. Right, we're going in. Well, I'll do it. I'm SO19 trained. Are you? And everything you've told the court about working with Miss Page is based on how many years' experience? Twelve years. I imagine you really got to know her well over that time. Yes. Paul is an excellent officer and a great colleague. One of the best. Thank you. PC Stamp. Over those 12 years, you must have become very good friends. We did. How close did you and PC Page become? Well, in your statement, you said, Polly Page has no side to her. She has time for everyone. Well, the truth is, you wanted her to have more time for you, didn't you? I did have some feelings for her, yes. Did you ever tell her about them? A few times. Well, tell us about the last time. We were trapped on a job together. I thought it'd be the perfect chance to tell her how much I liked her. I hope that maybe she felt the same way. Did she? Excuse me? No. So she turned you down? Yes. Well, police officers aren't exactly famous for their pay packets, are they? It had nothing to do with that. Polly said she wasn't ready for a relationship at that point. It's odd then that she embarked on a relationship with Dr. Preston quite so quickly. Could it be that you're not in the same financial league as Max Wyatt or Dr. Preston? back to their property for the time being. What? what? That is over. Oh, Gary, oh, we shouldn't be here. When he said something was about to kick off an operation. Go back to the station, Gary. Oh, just tell me, Kelly. All right, look, Inspector Gold asked me and Nick to go in there and bring out a couple of residents we missed last night. What, I'm putting my dad in more danger? No, it's all being planned. SA19 are going to provide cover. Gary. You describe Polly Page as having a vulnerable side. What do you mean? I mean that she knows how hard life can be from personal experience. That makes her a good police officer. If you knew her so well, 
Why didn't she move in with you when she became homeless? Well, she probably wouldn't have wanted to, but I should have offered. She was also eligible for police housing and loans, was she not? Yes. But she chose not to take them. She chose instead to move in with a terminally ill man. Is this a new service the police are offering? Go and live with vulnerable victims of crime? I think not, Sergeant Ackland. And wouldn't PC Page, working in the uh, community safety unit, be particularly aware of the danger of that? Yes. And yet, on her first day back at work after sick leave, she meets Dr. Preston and decides to take advantage of him. No, she met a gentleman in a lot of pain and she wanted to help him. Isn't that what she'd like you to think? No, it's what I know. So why didn't she say in her first police statement that she helped him to die? I don't know. So this good officer lied. Do you find that acceptable? No, she made a mistake. Thank you. No further questions. The negotiator will ring Ellis and tell him that the medical supplies are being delivered and keep him talking. Then your two move in, under cover of six SO-19 officers, armed and with ballistic shields. They'll group outside whilst Mr and Mrs Brooks are retrieved. Only when they leave do you deliver the supplies, again with an escort. Come on, why are you doing it? The old thing's too risky. I made it clear that you stayed back in the station. You know how trigger up here this is. Well, this maniac has already taken a pot shot at Cameron. I have looked at all the circumstances and we have to make sure that Miss Brooks' parents gets out of there. You're the one who recruited my dad as your snout. The sole reason we are in this fantastic situation is because you decided to waltz merrily into the middle of a CID operation. Have you forgotten that PC best? Now get him out of here. You've told us about your relationship with Dr. Preston. Let's move on to events surrounding his death. When did it become clear he intended to take his own life? Well, he only told me just before the end. But it had been on his mind for a long time. How do you know that? Owen was a doctor. He knew exactly how his cancer would progress. He was a proud man, too. He'd live life to the full. He didn't want to end up relying on other people. How did you feel when he told you? Devastated. But you can't have been surprised. No. What did you say? Well, on one hand, I thought I should try and dissuade him. But on the other, I knew it was his choice. Didn't being a police officer help? Well, I thought it might. But it only confused things. Because Owen asked me as a friend, not as a police officer. I'm not saying that any of this is right. It's just... Well, you can't just turn off your feelings, can you? But you could have always walked away. And let Owen die alone. What kind of friend does that? If you really care about someone, well, all you have in the end is a belief, you know. That you're doing the right thing. Did that belief tell you to stay to the end? Yes. Did that belief tell you to pass him the syringe? It was what he wanted so much. He couldn't reach it. He didn't have the strength. So I gave it to him. I thought I was doing the right thing. How did you feel after he died? Shattered. But you're an experienced officer, forensically aware. You must have known that you'd left fingerprints on the syringe. I wasn't even thinking about that. There was no reason to worry about it. 
What did you do? I called Kathy Bradford. She said, don't move, don't touch anything, that she was coming round. And she did. B.C. Bradford attended the crime scene? Yes. Hi. The DCI has just sent us down to Dad's hostel. Why? We're looking to see if we could find any clues as to where he might be if he isn't a hostage. What did you find? Nothing much. Imagine your whole life in a couple of suitcases. Yeah, my heart bleeds. You look like you're having a great time. We were. After Kathy had left the house, I did what she said. I told Sergeant Murphy I'd found Owen dead, the syringe already in his arm, and that I'd called Kathy, and she told me to contact the police. What happened the following morning? Well, I came into work to the station to write up my statement. What were you going to say? The truth. I decided I couldn't lie. We did? I know. Kathy persuaded me. What did she say? She said I'd be destroyed. My job, my life, everything. And more than that, well, I'd be implicating Kathy too. Why didn't you ignore her? I was in shock, grieving for Owen. I guess I was looking for guidance. So you followed her advice? Where else do you turn but to a friend? Then... You changed your statement again when they found your fingerprints on the syringe. I admitted what I did then. But you still kept secret PC Bradford's involvement. I'd been arrested for murder. The stakes had just got even higher. I'm, why drag Kathy into the investigation? You did all this. To protect her. I thought she was my friend. Tell me about this friend. She made me feel good about myself, gave me confidence. I mean, I, I didn't ask for Owen's ring. I was overwhelmed by it. Kathy said it was a gift. Even suggested I should get it valued. And then when Owen left me all his money, well, Kathy helped me buy the flat and car. Well, she said it was a blessing. The money wasn't important to you? No. Owen's friendship was all that mattered to me. Is that why you offered it to Josh Preston? Yes. Not to buy him off? No. But you can understand how it looked. I don't care how it looked. I know why I did it. You thought you were doing the right thing. You see, I don't deny I helped Owen to commit suicide. And what's more, I'd probably do it again if I had to. Owen was a wonderful man who deserved a long and happy life. Now, I couldn't give him that. But I could help him to have a peaceful death. My mistake is listening to Kathy. Because if I'd have confessed right from the start, I wouldn't be standing here now. Have you got everything George asked for? Times two, just to be on the safe side. And the radios have been switched to talk through so that we can have continual contact. Right. We better get going. Come on. We'll be back before you know it. Come on.
If your Bradford's got a lot to answer for, stand it by while Polly got herself into this mess. You know, she specifically told me that Polly knew about Max. Some friend, eh? Keeping that from Polly. Still, let's hope that Polly's come and clean is enough to get her off. Yeah, well, the tough bit's yet to come because the prosecution's going to go in really hard now. Kathy. Well, your secret's out now. Tend to be friends with Polly all the time you're stabbing her in the back. I had no idea Polly was going to say those things about me. And you're right, I'm supposed to be her friend. What's she doing? You lied in your statement. Polly would have come clean from the start if it hadn't been for you. Hey, I'm just as shocked as you. Polly's changed a version of events three times. It's her back against the wall, not mine. And I thought I knew her. Why's she doing this to me? Stand by, stand by. Go, go, go! Go, go! Lethargic and confused. You're the postman? No, Mrs. Brook, we're the police. Can we come in? Well, you look like the postman. Frank and I are getting lots of cards today. Flowers, oh, too. Really? Good, good. Oh, good. Oh, Mrs. Brook, you're right. Frank, hurry up. It's the taxi. It's all right, Mrs. Brook. We'll, we'll get your husband. Find her medication. Right, do you want to take a seat down here, Mrs. Brook? You don't usually send two postmen. How long have you two been married then? Not as long as you. Fifty years today, Frank and me. Congratulations. Nick, none of this has been touched. Now, when was the last time you had your injection, Mrs. Brook? Frank? Frank? Where is he? Your husband, Mrs. Brook. Do you know where he is? Right, you find her other shoe. I'm going to go and find Mr. Brook. doing they should be out by now mr. Brook can you hear me mr. Brook Yes, ma'am. Looks like a heart attack or something. Let's just get moving, shall we? Nick, we need you out of there. Mrs. Brooke won't leave without her husband. Hang on. Get Sandra Brooks over here, would you? I don't think we've got time for hand-holding right now. Nick, do whatever you can to get Mrs. Brooks out of there. We'll send two more officers in. If that means telling her about her husband, then do it. Actually, Mrs. Brooks happy to go now. Yeah? Yeah, she doesn't want to keep the taxi waiting, do you, love? No, love. Mom, the situation's resolved itself. We're bringing Mrs. Brooke out now. Come on. Sergeant Smith, you can go ahead with the delivery. Right, Mrs. Brooke. Where's my husband? He's right behind us. Is he still getting dressed? Yeah, he wants to look smart. Get him. Get Frank. Where is he? Get Frank now! He's not feeling too well, Mrs. Brooke. What's he? Mrs. Brooke, calm Frank. down, please. Frank! Mrs. Frank. Brooke! No. Oh, this doesn't look good. Nick, what's happening? Too late. Compromise! All police, put the gun down! Now! Stand still! Everybody, keep still! Stand still! You are. Put the I'm gun down! Close. Now! What's going on? Look, mate, look. I'm unarmed. No, but he is. No, a lot of you! Look, it's your neighbour. She's really ill. What? They just want to take her to the hospital, that's all. They make them put the guns away. All of them! Look, everyone just back off! <laughs> just let them go. Why should I? Because you can have me instead. 
Okay. Why not? You heard Mr. Ellis? What the hell does Smithy think he's doing? He's offered himself as a hostage. He's doing what? In. Right, close the door. Get up to the attic. Yeah. Oh, come on, move! Take all your gear off and throw it on the floor. And your vest. That's the way. Now sit down there. Sit down! What's that? Give us your vest. Right. Nice one. Congratulations. That was uh, quite a performance. You can stop pretending now. I wasn't pretending. This is the third version of the story you've told us. Why should we believe this over the others? Because it's the truth. I don't think you have any idea what the truth is, PC Page. It changes from day to day. Not this time. The truth is that your fingerprints were found on the syringe. That is a fact. You can't deny it. You administered a larger dose of morphine than would usually be the case to Dr. Preston. No. The truth is that when you let it slip to Josh Preston that you were present at Dr. Preston's death, you tried to buy his silence. No, I didn't. And the truth is, you are a desperate woman with your back against the wall. No. And the only way that you can try and limit the damage is to drag your friend down with you. <sighs> so you expect us to believe that you, an experienced police officer, who has to make important decisions on a regular basis, could be so easily influenced by a colleague as to falsify a statement? She said it was the only option I had. No, there was another option. That was to tell the truth from the start. I wanted to protect Kathy. She doesn't need protecting. Kathy Bradford's statement has been consistent the whole way through, hasn't it? Hasn't it? Yes. Because Kathy Bradford is the one telling the truth, not you. She's the innocent party in all this. What? She has been a loyal and trusting friend. How can you say that? She didn't even tell me she'd got engaged to Max. It's because she knew how you'd react. You think this is about revenge? No. I think it's about jealousy. I think you are jealous of an honest friend who has an honest relationship with an honest man who you ruthlessly set out to exploit the same way you exploited Dr. Preston. No. You just can't stand to see her happy, can you? And you would do anything to destroy it including telling as many lies as necessary. I'm not lying, I'm telling the truth. Everything I've told you is the truth. No further questions. If it pleases, my lord, I should like to recall PC Bradford to re-examine her on the evidence given by the defendant. The court will adjourn for 20 minutes whilst I make my decision. Inspector Gold, you know that Sergeant Smith volunteering himself as a hostage goes against all protocol. His priority was to get Mr. and Mrs. Brook out alive. I told you my priority was to contain the gunman. But your officer deciding to play action man has undermined that. He's given Ellis an exit strategy. He's forced our hand. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's me sorted. Because <laughs> now I've got you. It's good to see. Yeah, it's great. Because the first thing is, all those guys outside, you're going to have to take away their guns, yeah? Get them right out of my face. I won't have to come out all guns blazing, because when they've gone, I can think straight, yeah? Yeah, nobody try to stress me out. Really get myself sorted. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, really get me act together. And do what? Who asked you to talk? I just don't think that you're making much sense at the moment, Jules. You need to be thinking clearer. Shut it! Okay. Right. You should know I've put my officers on standby. Standby? Sergeant Smith will never talk Ellis down from his perch. We need to bring this to a conclusion. Force an entry. What, with one of my officers in there? I don't think so. With due respect, your officers have done nothing but jeopardise this operation. And with due respect, I am the senior officer here. But I think you'll find SO-19 have control of the scene, Mark. You will not go waving your gun about without my say-so, Sergeant. He's got an hour. Then we're going in. Me through to Superintendent O'Cara, please. You know something? Never meant to cause no grief. No one will believe me, mind, but it's the truth. No, I'm sure it is. As if you care. Well, no one plans to get into a situation like this, do they? So how'd it happen? I got boxed in. It was Cole's fault. He made me do the job. Sure. No, he made me. And here's one bad call after another. Maybe he set me up, eh? I had my way to go back to zero. Start over. Well, perhaps you can. Yeah. We don't have to make it any worse, do you? I'm not giving myself up. No way. I didn't mean that. I meant that... Sit down. Just that you could give up your other hostage. Alan Best. <laughs> you guys still think I've got a vest? <laughs> nice one! So he's not here with you? That piece of scum. He was never here with me! That don't matter now, does it? Because I got you now. A real life police officer. You're my ticket out of here. So how are you going to do it then, mate? What's your big plan? Nice move, Inspector. Getting your superintendent involved. My boss has just told me to pull back. Look, I'm only trying to protect Sergeant Smith. We're all trying to do that. Oh, yeah? What I need to do is radio my senior officer. Oh, yeah? And who else? No, you see, it's a special frequency and I can talk directly to her. I'll get her to bring her car round. Right, make it a big one, yeah? Bulletproof. OK. But that'll need to be requisitioned from the diplomatic division. It could take an hour or so. Right, and then what? We'll go out together. We'll get in it, and we'll go wherever you want. But, but there are two things that we need to do now. And the first is that I need to treat your arm, and then I have to show my colleagues that I'm unharmed. Let me speak to the negotiator and tell them I'm OK. No, I put it down. Look, they need to know that I'm OK. Forget it. Mark, an update from the negotiator. He can't get hold of Ellis. It's not a good sign. Get your troops ready. Get away from the window. Turn round. On your knees. You made a sign. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I saw you by the window. Just stay calm. A car. secret bloody sign. No, I didn't. I didn't make any sign. Put his up. Come on, round the bar. Round the bar. That's the way. 
she think I'm thick? Hey? Do you think I've got you lot sauced? Hey? P.C. Bradford. We've established P.C. Page phoned you on the night that Dr. Preston died. No one's disputing that. Did you attend the crime scene? No, I did not. Did you advise P.C. Page to cover up what happened? No. Tell her to keep her story simple for the investigating officer? No. Well, what about her statement the following morning? P.C. Page wanted to come clean. Did you persuade her otherwise? No. She was in a state of grief, P.C. Bradford. Yeah. And you didn't apply pressure on her in any way? No. Now's your chance, P.C. Bradford. Are you really going to stand aside and watch your best friend be sent down for something you know she didn't do. Look. Yes? You didn't see how upset she was. Of course I wanted to help. So you made her change her statement? She was my best friend. She'd just been through this terrible, awful experience. Yes, well, we all know what she's been through. Let's just stick to the facts, shall we? Would you like a glass of water? Answer the question, please. Did you force PC Page to alter her statement to protect yourself? No, sir, I did not. Yeah. yeah. How'd the interview go? I wanted to answer his questions, honey. I did. But I knew nothing. That's not true. It is. My own dad, and I knew nothing. Oh, Gary. All I've got are these. A few old photographs. And the last time we met, I could have done something to change that, but I didn't. I didn't even give him a chance to try and make it up, wouldn't I? Don't be so hard on yourself. And why not? Inspector was right. It was my fault that all this happened. If only I'd have just stayed away, just kept out of it. You weren't to know this would happen. And what if it is too late, honey? Why hasn't anyone heard from him? What if he is in there and I don't get a chance to try and put things right with me, Dad? I'm never going to forgive myself. Try. Now it's time to make yourself useful. Where are your keys? They're in my belt. Right. Are you able to continue? Yes, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't be like this. It must be tough to be suddenly exposed. Exposed? Yes. 
The truth is finally out. I don't feel exposed. I feel betrayed. My so-called best friend has just stood up and told you a hideous pack of lies. You're a professional officer, PC Bradford. Don't pretend you're shocked. Yes, I am a professional, but I'm human too. And I feel such an idiot. My bottom is thinking, why can I see this happening? Another part of me can't believe it has happened. You want to know about my friendship with Polly? When we first met, she'd been through a rough time, then she met Owen. Things happened so fast, and before I knew it, we were like sisters. We told each other everything. Now I know she was just using me, like she did everybody else. And what she do now, facing a murder charge, she spews one disillusional lie after another, hoping something might stick. <laughs> All I ever wanted to be was Polly's friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, found out she'd lied in a statement. I felt so hurt, so wounded. Who was I going to turn to but Max? Only he knew what it was like to be betrayed by Polly. And then we comforted each other. And out of all the pain, something wonderful. Something pure happened. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No more questions. No more questions, my lord. <laughs> I try not to move, all right? <laughs> so how'd you do it? Guess. At the van. Yeah, I lost control. And he jumped me. Who did, Alan? No, the Pope. So where is Alan Best? How should I know? That needs stitches, but I'm just going to bandage it, all right? Right, whatever. Just get on with it, eh? <sighs> right, just do me a favour and keep some pressure on that wound. Right. Are you good at this? Yeah, well. Hope you're just good behind the wheel. Because they're going to be shooting at us. Try to take me out. I'm good enough. Now, do you want me to call the inspector and get the car brought round? Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure you don't want something for the pain? What you got? Go, go, go. This is Smith for you. Suspects arrested and nobody's out. Good boy. Yes! 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 Cool as ice, right? Oh, like you could have pulled it off. But you did a fantastic job. I don't. What the hell were you playing at offering yourself up like that? Excuse me? Not only did you jeopardise the SO-19 operation, but you put yourself and your fellow officers in danger. I accept that. But at the time, I thought it was the best thing to do. And it was. Quick thinking and calm under pressure are qualities I like to see more of. Thanks, Bob. Don't make a habit of it, Smithy. During the course of this trial, we have heard several accounts of the events surrounding Dr Preston's death. Essentially, they come down 
to the two versions outlined by Mr. Palmer and Miss Barton in their summings up. Either this is the story of a close friend carrying out the wishes of a dying man, or of a manipulative gold digger abusing her position as a police officer to prey on vulnerable people. We have seen the friendship between PC Page and PC Bradford has fallen apart, but does that mean that the evidence of both is tainted? Or is one account more credible than the other? You must choose. But you must be satisfied beyond all reasonable doubt that the defendant killed Dr. Preston. You may retire. Court will rise. Come on, come on. You can't stay here. Come on, out you go. Come on, out you go. Not the back, not the back. Not the back. Try and get yourself arrested because it won't work now. Out you go. Out. I can't go out now. Out. No, I can't go out there. They want me. Get out. Get out. Shh. And don't you let him back in. I've enough excitement for one day. Thank you very much. Don't worry. Oh. How's it going, Polly? Jury have gone home for the night. Have you heard about Cathy, Mum? Cathy? She sailed Polly down the river. Oh, you'd have thought she was the one on trial. We had tears, we had lies, you name it. Well, she's right when she got back here. Kathy's back here. Yeah, she's just gone out with Julia. Everybody looked at me as if it was my fault. It's unbelievable, yeah. isn't it? Oi! Oi! June's just got back. She can take over if you like. No, no, it's fine. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Doc. Hi, Gerald. Where's Alan Best? Oh, you think I'm going to help you, dear? God damn it! I don't think so somehow, mate. Come on! Yeah? Come on! Yeah. Shut up! Get off! Yeah? Shut up! Come on! You're dead! Get off my shut up! Get in there! Oh. <laughs> Look, I'd pay, I'd pay for anything, right? Just stay there! At least the judge was on my side, eh? I just wanted to talk to her and she ended up before. Oh, really? Oh. Look, I, I mean, I can't lie, could I? Cathy, can you just give me oh, a yeah. hand here, please? Yeah, I'm just saying. Let's get him cuffed and back to the station. Come on. You're very pretty. Come though. on. Look, if he wasn't in the flat with Vellis, then where is he? I don't know, Gary. He would have phoned me. Yeah, but would he, though? Look, maybe he's at the pub or something. Gary, there's still no sign of your dad. Look, I'm sorry, ma'am. You know about what I said to you earlier. I... Yeah, but uniform, I have found the van that Ellis escaped in. Now, there's evidence of a struggle, a large amount of blood, and a bullet hole in the door. Now, we're doing everything we can to find him. I'm in my office if you need me, all right? <sighs> OK, come on, get out. It's all right, I'll take over. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Well, they just want to talk to my wife, man. Yeah, well, the custody officer will give you a right to... Oh! oh. Yuki, what are you doing? <laughs> I know he's going to be sick. <laughs> Watch it! Watch yeah. 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 it! Get back! <laughs> you stupid bitch! I told you I wanted to talk to my wife! Action. For the first time Don't since worry, its pilot in 1983... Cue them. The bill is live. Thanks. Quite nervous, yeah. It's an episode you can't afford to miss. Three. Thursday, the bill live. You killed my dad, Gary! 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 G